Welcome to part two in this video series where we discuss the differences between the different decades of 19th century fashion. This video covers the second half of the 19th century from the 1850s through to the 1890s, but be sure to check out part one to discover the fashions of the earlier portion of the century. The 1850s was marked by exuberant, feminine, and colorful dressing. The fashionable silhouette of the day was defined by sloping shoulders, a small waist, and a large voluminous skirt. The large skirt was made possible through the patenting and invention of the crinoline. One of the main characteristics of the 1850s fashion was the dome-shaped skirt and its fullness being evenly distributed. The skirt was supported underneath by multiple petticoats, sometimes up to seven at once. Compared to the 1840s, the waist was now at its natural position. Daytime dresses also typically featured high necklines, and the entirety of the body being completely covered up. The narrow-fitting sleeves of the 1840s began to lessen. Sleeves became wide and open, expanding either from the shoulder or from the elbow. Pagoda sleeves were also very common and sometimes worn with removable white undersleeves. Sleeves could also be trimmed with ribbons, fringe, and tassels. Evening dresses typically comprised of very short sleeves, bearing one's chest and shoulders, where the waistline would typically end in a point. For outerwear, women accompanied their dresses with shawls and bonnets. Now let us discuss the key takeaways from this decade. There is an emphasis on femininity and colorful, exuberant dressing. The skirts of the dresses are very wide and the fullness of the skirt is the same around the entire circumference. The skirts also often featured multiple layers and the crinoline was in use. For daytime, the sleeves were wide and mostly the whole body was covered up. For evening wear, the sleeves were off the shoulder and the chest and neck were exposed. The waist was also at its natural position. By the 1860s, we see the skirts become the widest that they have been. And by 1862, the cage crinoline begins to swing towards the back. In 1868, we see a flattening of the front of the garment and an emphasis completely towards the back of the dress. During this time, this shape of the dress was helped by a crinolette, which was a series of half hoops only supporting the volume towards the back. At the beginning of the decade, women's skirts were humongous, being 12 to 15 feet in circumference and of course being that dome shape. There was a fitted bodice and a variety of sleeve lengths. The bell-shaped pagoda sleeves of the 1850s still continued to be popular, but more frequently we saw in the 1860s that the sleeves began to close at the wrist. During the daytime, women often paired their skirts with blouses or shirt waists, and still the entire body would be covered. But in the evening, the neckline of the garments would be dropped to off the shoulder. The key takeaways from this decade are as follows. There was an emphasis at the back of the dress, which increased as the decade went on. Skirts were also at their widest point in the early 1860s. We see that in the daytime, the whole body is covered up, and women often wore shirt waists and blouses pairing with their skirts. And evening wear, the dresses are typically off the shoulder. The waist climbs up a bit above the natural waist level. At the beginning of the decade, bodices are more plain and there is more emphasis on geometrical details. But towards the end of the decade, we see more details and elements on the dresses arising. It is also important to note that in the 1860s, we see the rise of the famous designer Charles Frederick Worth, who was celebrated as the father of haute couture. In the 1870s, we see women's clothing become increasingly colorful, complex, and restrictive. In the first part of the decade, we see a silhouette that has lower sloped shoulders, a raised waistline, 
a layered and heavily pleated skirt where bodices were just as decorated as the skirts. The bodices also featured high necklines, but it was at this time that they were allowed for a V-neck or a squared neckline during the day. And these necklines were almost always trimmed with ribbons, lace, ruffles, or braided materials. There was typically an underskirt and an overskirt, and the overskirt allowed for the emphasis at the back of the dress to be even greater, and underneath, which would have been, of course, the bustle. Around 1876, the bustle collapsed into what is known as the Princess Line, also called the Natural Form Era, which only lasted for a few years. The skirts became very narrow and a long train was added to the back of the dress. At this time, the waistline dropped to the natural waist in the princess looks, and the shoulders began to creep slowly upwards as the sleeves tightened, accentuating the long, slim line of the dress. In previous decades, women often wore shawls and capes for outerwear, but during this time, women opted for coats and jackets. The 1870s was very influenced by 18th century styles. The femininity, lace, and over-the-top designs were very much in vogue. Now, let's discuss the key takeaways from this time period. We see increasingly colorful, complex, and slightly restrictive garments. We see that there are bustles now, and the emphasis of the skirt is in the back. And in the beginning of the decade, we saw women wear double skirts, while later the princess line would become popular. Jackets and coats would begin to be worn for outerwear, and small hats were used instead of bonnets. Garments had increasingly extraordinary details all over, not only on the skirt, but on the bodice as well. And the main influence of this time period was from the 18th century. The 1880s was marked by an abundance of decoration and a rigidly structured bustle shape. Though there was heavy decoration, the silhouette was slender and angular. Through the entirety of the decade, the design was concentrated at the back of the dress. The soft, sloping bustle of the 1870s quickly faded into a bustle which was very angular along the back of the dress. During the daytime, dresses featured high, narrow shoulders, which descended into very tight sleeves. Collars were often fitted and tall, and often boned for shaping. Hemlines were usually just above the floor, and skirts often had many overskirts that were swagged and tucked up in a variety of locations to reveal more details on the dresses. Jackets of this time period were just cut above the bustle, but were very common and very ornately decorated. The materials were plentiful and beautiful. Silks, ribbons, ruffles, flounces, stirrings, bows, lace, and all kinds of decoration covered the dresses of this decade. The key takeaways from this time were high ornamentation, colorful dresses, shelf-like protruding bustles, and an emphasis at the back of the dress. By the 1890s, the protruding bustle began to quickly disappear, and instead there was an emphasis on the sleeves. The puffy sleeves grew in size until 1895, and afterwards quickly descended. The skirts were also fuller in shape, which were A-line in effect. The popular silhouette of the day featured a very small waist, which was pretty much at its natural position. And at the beginning of the decade, we see the large sleeves. And then as time goes on, they quickly decline, where the skirt is seen a little slimmer at the beginning of the decade and quickly expands throughout the decade. As time went on, the dresses began to feature less detail and became more plain and utilitarian for working conditions. Angular sleeves were also very popular, either at the beginning of the decade or at the end of the decade, when the large puff was very decreased. Most day bodices covered the entirety of the neck and arms, but this wasn't always the case. Evening looks were extremely fabulous. Satins and silks were the main materials that were used. Dresses were elaborately done, but were less over the top than the 1880s. The key takeaways from this time period are larger skirts that don't hug the body, 
an increase in sleeve size, but a decline starting in 1895. The fabrics of this time are absolutely beautiful, but there is less emphasis on appliques, which are applied to the skirts. And instead, there is a focus on the material at hand.